Alright, welcome back to another video and uh, in this one we'll be talking about curing and um, how you can use double or triple arrow function. So your first function returns a function which returns a function which returns the value you're looking for. So this is uh, very useful if you want to adopt the functional programming um, where uh, return of function only depends on the arguments you uh, present that function. Uh, so you don't access uh, variables outside of that function scope. Uh, you don't change variable outside of that function scope. And it helps um, uh, leave the code cleaner in general. So you can expect, you know what you're going to expect um, when you ask for a specific value and you don't have like some places on your code changing the variables that acts, uh, that affect like your previous functions that were depending on that variable as well. All right, so we're gonna see just that. So I'm gonna do uh, a reference to my previous video, uh, which was on getting a uh, fake, um, uh, fake uh, memory address of uh, objects uh, and we'll be doing quite the same thing but this time in um, a curried way or a functional programming way, so you'll see the difference. Um, if you're interested in the first video, I'll link it in the description as well, so you can see the difference and uh, appreciate it. So I didn't want it to do it in the first video, so I will. So in order to just leave some of the complexity and what is that double, or in this case triple row function. Uh, was so there it is separate video all right so first of all I am going to uh, get uh, a user so the same as we did in the first video so it's gonna be me and then I'm going to get an array which is going to be user1 then another object with the same name. I can't write my own name. Uh, and the good old Joe. And then again, user one. And here we are going to just call it people, for instance. And let's say here is equal to people. All right. so. We have our array of uh, objects and we are going to um, get uh, information from it. So as we did in the first video, I'm going to need a generator. So it's going to be a generator. Um, I won't need any argument for this one. And this is the only place you can do a while uh, well loop, uh, so it's going to be well here. Um, let's say random is equal to math dot random. This time I'm not forgetting; it's a method. We want it as a string, hexadecimal, and we are going to get a slice, so two to avoid the zero dot, and then let's say we want eight numbers. And here I am going to yield random. All right. So it's a generator function. Every time you ask a new value, you'll get uh, something that looks like a memory address. So in order to make it even more lifelike, I'm going to do something like this. So it actually answers something that looks like an exact small uh, address. All right. So here we are going to go to um, the curried function, double arrow function, triple arrow function, the way you want to call it. Um, and in my case, this is going to be, um, let's call it preload. I am going to need known objects. I am going to need reference object and I am going to need a generate function. 
this is going to return a function. So I'm going to do another function. And this is the base principle uh, between um, underneath currying, curried, uh, currying, or curried, or double error function, or whatever. So when you execute that function, preload, you can specify some um, uh, parameters that will return a new function that will use those parameters within its block, uh, its uh, common block. Uh, and this way, known object, ref, and generate always stay in the scope of that function. And in my case, I'm going to use it to uh, decide whether I want to look for reference or I want to get all the references. So here I'm going to say um, this is going to look for references, which is going to be false by default. And if I am looking for references, I'm going to return that object that we're going to build um, running your application. Um, but if this is true, sorry, if this is true, we're going to return the reference. If it is not true, we are on the state of I'm looking to get the address or get a new address if the object is not known yet. So I'm actually going to add another error function. So in my case, it's going to be object. All right. So, and this returns, um, this returns uh, the actual thing. So in my case, uh, the thing was getting an address. If so, if you're interested in that block, you can check my uh, previous video and um, on how to get a memory address, like fake memory address. So if known object has uh, object address is equal to known object get object, else uh, we are going to get address is equal to generate next value we are going to non object set object address and the same as we did before uh, the reference address is going to be the object itself and we are going to return the address all right We have our function that's going to do like the heavy lifting of uh, comparing addresses, returning the address and stuff. Now, what we want is we want to um, do kind of a setup. So setup is going to be preload. And we are going to put those arguments in our preload function, uh, our setup function. So every time we call setup, we actually use those arguments already. So in my case, it's going to be uh, a new map because I need a map for the known objects. This is going to be an empty uh, reference array. And this is going to be generator um, and nothing because I don't have any here. All right, so now that I have um, my setup, I will actually need to change a few things. So <clears throat> there's there are different ways we can do something like this. In my case, I will do everything in the object um, last part of the error function. So in that case, it's going to be if we got a reference. So if reference is true, we're going to do something else, do something else. All right. So if we are in reference, we are just going to return ref. 
So we could be doing this if else um, in the second error function, but to keep it uh, simple, we'll keep it uh, here in the last one. So, okay, so I have my setup. Now I am going to find ref, well, maybe find address. This is going to be setup false. So here we, uh, we provide the second parameters. Uh, so in our case, we are not looking for the ref array. We are looking to get an object tested. And we are going to um, show ref, which is going to be set up true. So in this one, we are actually looking to get into that block and just return the refs. Which is really, really cool here is those two functions, so those two functions which are stored in a variable, are actually forked from setup. So the same setup is going to provide those two functions. And it's really interesting because then all of those uh, parameters we, which become viable uh, in your in your uh, function becomes shared between those two functions uh, without having to be shared with the whole application. So you're not depending on someone else changing your ref array. You're not depending on someone adding new object that you don't know about and stuff. So now that we have something like this, we can just go around and say that array is people.map where people are p and the return is find address of p. So we get like uh, a string of memory addresses. And as you can see, uh, we are using user one at the beginning and the end, and we get the same reference for that user. <clears throat> so because it's the same object, this one and this one have the same properties, same values, but are different objects. Uh, so you're, if you are interested in this, you can check my previous video, which is in the link below, in the description below. And now we want to display the reference, which is going to be show reference and just show reference. Because in that show reference, we are on that execution blocks. So we can see here, we get our memory address, which comes as Arthur. So it's something we want. The second one is also Arthur, but in a different object. And the third one is Joe in yet another uh, different object. All right. So that's pretty much uh, all about uh, uh, querying. And uh, if you're interested, you can check on the internet. There's a lot of uh, different uh, that there are loads of articles about it and why it is really, really interesting, especially to keep your code clean. Um, but um, yeah, in our case, uh, that would be all. And I hope you either learned something or had the ability to think about it a little bit more. And if you already knew, good for you. All right, so I'll see you in another video later. Cheers.